Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. Well, we're into November, the final month of the meteorological autumn, and at times it can bring wintry conditions even to southern Britain. The picture here was taken in my garden in Berghampstead on the 29th of November last year. The sprinkling of snow there was the only one we had, I think, until the very end of the meteorological winter, around the 27th or 28th of February. Well, coming back to the short term, and is there any sign of colder weather on the way? I'll start by taking a look at the view across Europe and the North Atlantic. The animation runs from 18 GMT, Tuesday the 1st. And at the outset, it's a similar scenario to what we've had in recent weeks a brisk or strong Atlantic flow pushing eastwards across all parts of the UK. The tightly packed isobars indicate strong winds and the bands of showers and longer spells of rain affecting all regions. In the short term, not much changes. In fact, the wind strengthen, I'll come back to that in a moment, and there are further spells of rain in all parts of the UK. But then, as we go into the weekend, a Weak ridge of high pressure topples over the country. It brings dry conditions temporarily, but through Saturday the 5th, so bonfire night, a band of rain pushes eastwards across the UK, and that could cause some problems with the fireworks. But there's uncertainty about the exact timing of that rain, so keep up to date with the short range forecasts. It then clears away, but the unsettled theme continues. Further showers or longer spells of rain, and with winds going back into more of a southwesterly direction, that indicates that temperatures may well be rising. I'll come back to that a little bit later. Strong winds, very much a feature of weather, at least through the first few days. The uh, forecast gusts here from the UKV model are for Wednesday. And if I just stand back a little bit, 70 mile an hour gusts there in western coastal counties. And then through the afternoon by 17 GMT, the strongest winds moving across all parts of the UK. So gales could well be quite widespread. Certainly there could be some travel disruption in places, especially in the west. With the Atlantic driving things, the air mass temperatures are not likely to be very cold at all through the week at any point, but just to show that I'll run the sequence. The greens over the UK to begin with are lower than what we've had recently, just fairly close to the average for early November. And at times, warm sectors move eastwards across the UK, then cooler air returns, warmer air, all in all, probably close to or above the average a little bit when taken over the entire week. And what that means down at the surface, what sort of temperatures we can expect. The chart here is showing forecast maximums, 15 GMT, Wednesday v. 2nd. Quite a mild picture really, just a little bit close to the average than it has been recently, especially there in southern and central regions, cooler in the north with single figures being forecast. Moving forwards to 06 GMT on Friday, forecast minimums. This could well be the coldest night of the week. Single figures widely and a ground frost there in much of the north in sheltered areas, perhaps even in some southern and central uh, locations too. Moving forwards to Friday afternoon, temperatures at this point quite close to the average, so about as low as the daytime maximums are going to be through the first week, I would think. Single figures there in the north. With the relatively strong winds at this point and the lower temperatures than have been um, the norm for much of the time recently, I think it will actually feel quite cold, particularly there for those of you in southern and central Britain who've been accustomed to 16s, 17s, 18s during the days. But by Monday, the temperatures are picking up as the winds are going more into a southwesterly direction once more. 14s, 15s across much of England and Wales, even in the north there, double figures quite widely, just the Scottish Highlands where it's remaining a little bit cooler or colder. By Tuesday, well, very mild. 17s there in central and eastern Britain, 
even northeastern Scotland, 16 Celsius. So what about rainfall through the first five days? Well, the aggregate forecasts here are from the ECM model on the left, the GFS on the right. Both are pointing towards wetter conditions in the north and the west. The rain totals in East Anglia, according to the GFS, there are very low indeed, just two to four millimetres. ECM going for higher values, up to around 20 even in eastern England. Moving forwards to the 0 to 10 day period, wettest in the north and the west. In fact, very wet, the orange and red shade in indicating values well over 100 millimetres there in western Scotland. All parts of the UK have seen more rain by this point. The driest conditions once again though in central and eastern England. I think reasonably good agreement there on the distribution of rain, ECM in the short term, suggesting higher totals in central and eastern counties than GFS. GFS perhaps been a little bit conservative on this run, so I'd be tending closer towards the ECM, I would suggest. So, at the end of week one, do the deterministic models all show the same sort of pattern which GFS was going for? That's the Atlantic-driven southwesterly flow, high pressure perhaps beginning to build over continental Europe and just hinting that it could be influencing the UK's weather down the line. But I'll discuss that during the week two section of the forecast. The Canadian uh, model, very similar at the same time, they're high pressure once more, perhaps just wanting to come into play. And the German Icon model, similar, it's a southwesterly flow, a low pressure centered in the Atlantic, high pressure down to the south. The ECM, again, good consistency with a high pressure there over continental Europe, low pressure close to Iceland. Finally, the UK Met Office, uh, global, a little bit different perhaps, low pressure there just to the west and northwest of the UK and high pressure to the south. Perhaps some slight differences in the emphasis on the details, but all in all, good consistency across those global models. Quite a changeable pattern by the end of week one, a mildish one with winds coming from the southwest, hints of high pressure beginning to have more influence as it starts to build from south to southeast. Will that continue through week two or not? Well, it's all about trends and probabilities at this range as ever. I'll start with the 16-day GEFS plot for London. Air mass temperatures there across the top. The signal is very clear above average. The ensemble mean there, the thick purple line, a long way above a thick black line of 30-year norm, just dipping a little bit towards the very end of the period. So perhaps a cooling trend, but the signal there quite clear warm air aloft. Now, at this time of year, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be mild down at the ground level, because if you have calm conditions dominated by high pressure, clear skies overnight, it can cool down quite quickly at the surface. Whether or not that's the case here, I'll come back to in a second. But just briefly looking at the risk of rain across the bottom, well, spikes continue to appear through the second week. A moderate risk of rain, I would suggest. Not very wet, there should be some good dry periods in there, but an ongoing chance of rain. The wind speeds for week two for London. The purple line there is the ensemble mean, so again, averaging out the wind forecast from all of the individual runs, it's trending downwards through that period, so more of the individual runs going for calmer conditions after that windy start. I mentioned two meter temperatures, so the ones down at the ground level. Well, to begin with, it's a very mild picture indeed. Still quite a lot of the orange. Those are runs going for 16 to 20 Celsius in these daily columns. 
but it's the yellows which are really dominating. Those are 11 to 15 Celsius. And later on, an increasing amount of the light green runs forecasting between 6 and 10 being the maximum. So clearly a downwards trend towards the end. And that's probably sharper in terms of a dip from what was being forecast at the air mass, 850 HPA level. It could well be indicating that high pressure is starting to have more influence, especially towards the end there. And that fits in with the amount of rain spikes not being particularly great through week two. Moving up to Manchester, the air temperature profile is very similar to the London one. It's above the average. Also, the rain risk is similar. It doesn't look particularly wet. Again, I've annotated it as being moderate. So there will be wet conditions at times, periods of rain, but also I would expect a reasonable amount of dry weather. The wind speeds for Manchester, the trend is very similar to the, Lon to the London plot, decreasing there. The thick purple line, the ensemble mean, is moving downwards. It's lowering progressively through the second week. Two meter temperatures for Manchester, the same story. The columns are dominated by the yellows early on, the 11s to 15s. Towards the end, the amount of green increases, the 6 to 10s, and it actually becomes the majority by uh, Monday the 14th. So a cooling trend there down at the surface as well, similar to the London plot. Going up to Glasgow, the air mass temperatures above average through the second week, but dipping later on. In terms of a rain signal, there are more spikes on this plot from the were on the London and Manchester one, so it's a wetter story up in the northwest of the UK. Very typical, of course. It usually is the wettest in the northwest, not always. The wind speeds, the pattern similar to the London and Manchester plots, actually. The trend is downwards, so becoming less windy through the second week based on most of the runs in the ensemble. The two meter temperatures for uh, Glasgow, something of a cooling trend here. It's less marked though than on the London and Manchester plot. In actual fact, in the first few days, the amount of yellow increases, the 11s to 15s. It's later on where the light greens and dark greens become more dominant again. So the last few days, two meter temperatures begin to fall once more. The 10-day GEFS mean surface level plot, so this is the average of all of the runs in the GEFS for Friday the 11th, is indicating high pressure there to the southeast, possibly having more influence. The Atlantic flow bringing uh, showers or longer spells of rain to the west and the north especially drier in the south and the east. It doesn't look cold at the upper air temperature, at the upper air level, but as I say, if high pressure does start building northwards, that could well lead to temperatures at the ground level beginning to dip, as some of those uh, data tables were suggesting. The ECM plot for the same time. There are some slight differences here. More of a south or southwesterly flow, high pressure there, centered to the southeast of the UK, low pressure maybe a little bit further west there in the Atlantic than it was on the GEFS. But all in all, quite a similar scenario, just some hints here of high pressure beginning to have more influence on the UK's weather. Finally, the uh, pressure anomaly chart for days 10 to 15, generated from the GEFS data, the yellows, above average pressure, the blues below average. So a signal for low pressure to be centered to west, high pressure over continental Europe, and that's possibly beginning to have, as I say, a bigger impact on the UK. But it's not definite, it's just the signal there is for high pressure to start bringing drier periods, later on in the two-week forecast period. 
So, to summarise, week one, it's unsettled and it's likely to be very windy early on with gales being widespread. Temperatures fluctuate around the average, some cooler days and some notably milder ones. All regions have rain, but the wettest conditions will generally be in the west and the north. Windy there, as I've already mentioned. Week two, high pressure centred to the south will probably start to have more influence and that leads to an increasing chance of dry periods. Despite that, there will still be rain around, especially in the north and the west. The week begins with very mild conditions, but there are signs of temperatures dipping later on as that high pressure area begins to strengthen. So, there we have it. It's an unsettled start. The mild conditions continue into the second week, as does the risk of rain. But that begins to reduce as high pressure starts to build up from the south, from the southeast maybe. And in turn, that could allow temperatures at the ground level, at least for once we experience, to begin dipping potentially increasing the chance of overnight frost in the southern half of the UK as we head towards the middle third of November. But that's a long, long way off. In the short term, as I say, the focus is on unsettled weather. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, then as ever, please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. Thank you for watching now. Bye.